Good morning, good morning. This is Jacqueline Richardson and JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. We have rain here in Charlotte today, um, but it's pretty warm. You know, Charlotte, one day it could be cold, next day it's hot. That's the way it works here in Charlotte. But we love it because we don't have to wear coats that long. You know, we have a, a winter, maybe six weeks, if that, you know. <laughs> so, you know, we get through it. And even when it's raining, it's still beautiful, you know, so anyway, today I wanted to talk about culture today. Um, I need uh, people and the youth to understand certain cultures, you know, and where you need to, to stop judging or um, and this goes out to black, white, um, Hispanic, you know, um, any other cultures, Jamaicans, um, any other, I'm going to just say, not Jamaicans, I'm going to say Caribbeans, uh, I'm going to say these things, you know, um, I mean, these type of people need to learn to stop judging things that they do not know. Learn your history, you know. Um, granted, I was a child that was born um, into a family that held their culture heavy, okay, and when I say heavy, I mean heavy. My grandmother, um, she was a black native Seminole, okay? And um, she married a Cuban. They, they migrated from Florida uh, after she married him and had her kids and stuff like that. Um, I put on my post, they migrated in 1918. That's not true. I, I, that was when the, the Spanish flu happened. I meant to put the right uh, year. But I do apologize for that. Um, she had both of her kids in Florida, in Lakeland, Tampa area. Lakeland, um, which was Doris and Jean Rodriguez. Um, and then they migrated north, okay, when the depression and all that stuff happened uh, after the Spanish flu. My mom was born in New York. And of course, you know, she lived there, grew up there, and she had me and the rest of her kids, and we were all born in New York State. So we are native New York, New Yorkers, okay? However, our culture is not New York, okay? They came there uh, to make a living for our family, just like the rest of the natives and Cubans and the rest of his Hispanics that um, needed to make a life for themselves. However... Now, it's in reverse. Everybody's coming back down south where their land was, okay? Even if they didn't own land, they're coming back down south to purchase land, okay? Um, and that's just what it is, you know? This is the things that we do. Um, the natives are government people, okay? They always rock with the government, you know, because the government help them as much as they possibly can because this was their land, okay? Because uh, they were here in America first, you know, before they named it America, okay? So they had to give the natives something, okay? That doesn't stop, okay? It still moves on, okay? Granted, it's hard these days for us to go and put our paperwork in because they don't answer the phone, <laughs> Okay, they don't. They, 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 it's just crazy the way everything is today. However, um, there is information online where you can seek out your family members and see if your family was kind enough to sign the booklets and uh, present themselves as a natural Native American. Granted, my people was on it. Okay, um, thank God for my great 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 grandmother um she was on it and she made sure that she did that for her people and it means a lot people you know i had to tell someone you know they of age and when i say of age they're an adult adult okay a senior and you know they walk around talking about oh i'm this i'm that i'm this and that okay well we need you to prove it okay until you prove it you're nobody okay you just like a regular person walking around this earth you know, she just didn't want to listen to me. You know, she didn't want to give her family the life that they could have really had. Okay. Um, however, 
there's ways of doing it. All you got to do is know your family, you know, know the history. This is why we tell people, learn your history, know your history. Because as time go on, the family members die. And if the people are telling lies and not telling them the truth, they would never know who they are. Granted, the type of person I am, you know, people used to always say, oh, Jackie's black. But yet, instead, they have a Hispanic name. That doesn't make sense. You know, yeah, it didn't make sense. But once I became an adult, it all made sense. Then people used to say to me, you look so different. Why do you look different? You know, and I'm like, what do you mean? You got this unique look about you. And I hated it. You know, people, your eyes. Oh, my God, look at your eyes, your lips. And I'm like, well, why I got to be so different? You know what I mean? However, when I came down south, I start finding people that look like me. I said, oh, they look like me. They got the same eyes. They got lips like me. Those must be my kin. (laughs) And that's what I would say, you know. But this is the land that they came from. Okay, the South. So, of course, I'm going to find the people that look like me. And I feel normal again. I don't have to walk around people and feeling like I'm, I'm so different. I'm like an alien because I look different from everybody else. You know, but when I come down South, these people look like me. They are my culture. Okay? Granted, yeah, we all, they all migrated up North. A lot of the natives are at the top of New York. Okay, that's where you'll find most of the the natives. They're at the top. Then you have some in the middle, like around Delaware. You know, um, my son got the honor to stand before one of the chiefs and um, chat with him. Um, I got the honor to stand with one of the chiefs up in um, Buffalo. Well, I did more than stand with him. He gave me culture. He gave me knowledge. Um, he pretty much put me on and and let me know, you know, um, what they're about, you know, and, um, because my people wasn't teaching me. So I had to learn, you know, he knew, I guess, as soon as he looked at me that I was one of him and he had to give me the breakdown of, um, how our natives do things and, you know, whatever the case may be. And, um, when I stood before him, you know, I was, I'm, I'm kind of short, you know, and he was a tall man and he had on his, his, um, I don't know what they call it. I forgot because there's a name to it with the feathers and the hat, you know, and I'm looking up at him and he's talking to me and he's walking with me and I'm like, okay, you know, he's telling me different things and, and these are things that my family should have been telling me, but they failed to be honest with who I was. You know, why I'm the way I am, why I work so hard, why I do things the way I do things. And America has came to terms where they are hiding so much, meaning I'm talking about the people of America. They are hiding so much, but this is what they were taught, okay, because they didn't want to be judged or stereotyped. However, being judged don't always mean that you're bad. Okay, the Native Americans were good. They worked side by side with the with the government to continue to to uh, build the government, to continue to uh, bring money to our country. Okay, this is what they did. This is why they own all the casinos. That's theirs. Okay, um, and there's other things that they own as well uh, that kept ke- keep this country rolling. You know. Um, You're not going to walk into a casino and think it's owned, especially if it says uh, (laughs) a native name and think it belongs to the white man. No, that's just not happening. And the Native American might be white because we have black Native Americans and we have white Native Americans. But we are all all the Native Americans are still family. Okay, we're black. They're black and white. Okay, and they all stood together. It didn't matter whether or not um, your skin was darker than mine. Okay, Um, but now these people are still trying to make it where the black Americans are the worst Americans. Okay, and that's not true. 
The reason why y'all don't see all the other Americans is because they're closed in their homes, safe, um, going to work every day, getting their money, and minding their business because that's what the Native Americans did. Okay, they mind their business. They went to work, did what they had to do, build their fortune, um, and mind their business. This is what we did. Okay, so and when people say, you know, no, I, I'm gonna go back. My my people used to always say, "Why are you always out in the clubs? What is wrong with you? Run around with these people? That ain't what we do." I ain't understand what they was talking about. You know what I mean? I was always in the club dancing and stuff. Now, and see, my people, what they did was they had uh, parties and gatherings every weekend or every other weekend to come together because they did it privately. Okay? It was no, we was out mingling with all these other people, these strange people. But I got in the mix of that. Okay? And I had to learn that that is not my culture. So I can't be out there with all these different unknowns. Pretty much, that's what it said. Okay, and then once I became a music artist, I realized why a lot of the natives that are music artists. And if you if you do your research, there's more natives that's music artists than other other cultures. Okay, Um, why we just go do our work and leave. You know, this is what we do. You know, we don't hang around and party with the people. You know, um, because we are in a different mind frame. We have a different culture. Okay. We do our service and we go. Okay. And we pay our taxes and we move on. This is what we do. You know, um, this is why we kept the country going, you know, because we did what we were supposed to do, meaning follow the rules, doing things the right way. Okay. Granted, America has made it hard for some for some of the people to do, do things the right way all the time because they strip us of everything. Those rules that they they make sometimes hurt people so bad it just it it, it, it drives people crazy, you know. Um, now I, I want to touch base on this about and suicide has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. However, we just had another, um, they, they think it was, it wasn't a suicide, but a woman that fell off of, um, uh, I guess a balcony or out a window. I don't know. And they're saying it was an accident or whatever the case may be. I just heard it on the radio this morning. And well, one, I want to say this, the Native Americans <laughs> lived in the villages. We never lived up high. So if you're a Native American, number one, you shouldn't even be up in them tall buildings. We lived on the ground, on the land. Okay? Um, granted, you got people that say, hey, I'm not scared. I want to live in these tall, tall buildings. You know what I mean? And I'm just throwing this out there. This has nothing to do with, with them dying or whatever the case may be. But if they were Native, Native, Native Americans, they shouldn't even been up there. That's number one. Okay, now, I need people to understand my culture. Like, people couldn't, can't understand why I want a house. I have to have a house. Okay, it's in my culture. We are land people. Okay? You're not going to put me in a high-rise and look over the, the city or the mountains or whatever the case may be, because that's not in my culture. I'm not going to feel balanced. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why I will not go and get an apartment downtown. That's not my thing. Okay. I need land. Okay. My people, they like the land. We lived in villages. This is why when I lived in, um, Harford County, Maryland, um, people would say, Y'all live like low, you know, that, that's like a village, you know, that, that area. And I was like, yeah, and I love it. <laughs> it was right off of the water. I loved it. You know, like certain things could be happening like up higher in the mountains and we wouldn't get it because we were pretty much covered in the village, you know, and that's how the Native Americans lived. And I had to find out why 
I was the way I was. I, you know, I couldn't understand it. Like, why do I like all these other people like this? And I like this. Why? You know, but I had to read and, and, and learn my culture. You know, we are land people. Okay. You know, people, oh, you need to fly for what? If I can drive there, then I'll drive. If I can't, then I'll fly. However, for, for the most part, I'm land. Okay. I'm not going to be doing too many planes. That's not my culture. This is why I'm the way I am. So when y'all people start, you know, um, saying to yourself, well, why am I feeling this way? And why? Seek out who you are, even with food. You know, I was talking to one of my, um, they're not my, my family family, but they are my family through, through native, the native family, okay? And we was talking yesterday, and he was saying, yeah, I got an oily skin. I said, yeah, me too. You know, I said, you're going to have to dry out your skin, you know, pull those oils out. So, you know, your skin will be better. The same with the food we eat, you know. You have to know your culture in order for you to take care of yourself properly. And that's just the bottom line. You know, when you know your culture and who you are, then you can take care of yourself a little bit better because we keep dipping and dabbing in other people's stuff, okay? And it's making us sick. Now, I'm going to use this for instance, like my daughter. I eat shrimps a lot, okay? Shrimps have a lot of calcium, a lot of, a lot of everything that's good for you. However, my daughter, she eats the shrimps and her stomach bothers her. And I'm saying, well, why? Are you allergic to them? You know, or is it just that your body can't handle it because of who you are. But we don't know totally who she is on her father's mother's side. We only know on her, on her father's on her father's father's side and on my side. Okay, now my side, we, we eat all seafood. Okay, I'm allergic to everything but seafood. And that's, that, that, that's crazy. Okay, and that's why I'm trying to tell y'all this. I'm allergic to almost everything that I come in contact with but seafood. It's because of my culture. Okay? And if it's not because of my culture, it's because the stuff is not pure. Okay? So, I say that to say, this is why we need to do our research and learn who we are. Okay? And in that way, we can beat a lot of these illnesses. You know, y'all keep saying, oh, you know, why are we targeted for this illness and that illness? It's not that we targeted for those illnesses. It's that we are not supposed to be eating certain things because of our culture and who we are and what our blood line um, accepted. Okay, so that's 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 one of the, the problems with people, you know, and I work every single day of my life trying to figure out my culture and what. Is, is good for me. Okay. And what helps me survive every day. Because food is only a survival. Um, a survival thing. Some people are greedy. You know. And they just want to eat. 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 But we only supposed to eat to survive. And that's another thing. We be greedy. We want to eat. 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 And just keep eating. You know. And don't want to detox. When half of the food that you and ate, it's not good for you anyway. But they can't tell us, you know, and this is the thing that American America has done to you people, and, and I feel bad and I'm I'm sorry that they've done this to y'all. They can't categorize the whites, the blacks, the natives, the Hispanics, they can't categorize them all together. They just can't. Okay, because we all get different diseases and some of us get all the same disease. Okay, it's like I have a white friend. He has diabetes. I have uh, my daughter. She's uh, susceptible to diabetes because it runs in her family. Okay, this is why we can't be running around having babies with all these different people until we know the facts. We got to know Who's who and what's what? Because then you make a child that got all these ailments from both sides of the family and don't even know it. And then they're sick. 
They're born sick. We have to stop it. To help our people. We supposed to live longer than what we live. But we choose to just run ragged and just do whatever. That's not the way it's done. Culture sticks with culture. Okay, until you know, okay, now, we're Hispanics. Okay, I'm going to use Hispanics, and I'm going to use Caribbeans. They're the closest cultures that can possibly have babies together, possibly. Okay, because it all comes from the same, they was all in the same area out there. Okay, in, in um, the North Atlantic. And they was uh, inhaling and breathing all the same things. That's in their blood. Because you got to remember the air intake everywhere is different. Okay. The bacteria are different everywhere you go. This is why when the people go to the army or the navy or whatever the case may be. And they go to these different countries. And they come back. I've contracted this. And we're like we ain't never heard of nothing like that. Because that was only in that country. And then they bring it back over here because they breathe a different air. They have different uh, uh, animals. They have different um, bacteria because the heat is different. They have everything is different. The worst mistake America could have done was bring people from other countries to our country. Not saying that we need to get rid of you guys because y'all already here. But y'all have to learn how to live here in America because <coughs> things are different. Y'all bloodline contracted things that our bloodlines have no knowledge of. And until we do that research, it's not compatible. And that's just what it is. And y'all have to accept it eventually. I know y'all with the love this, love that, love everything, love whatever. But why would you have a child to pretty much die? Okay. Now, I can rock with the Hispanic, I mean, with the uh, Caribbean people because my people were out there as well. So I can eat their foods and digest it very well. Where if my people um, saying like, say my people that's full native, they may not be able to do the things that Caribbeans do or Hispanics do because they don't have that same blood. Because they weren't out, out there. They were here in America. Okay, so it can become a, a curse. It's a gift and a curse. And this is what we have to pay attention to, to help ourselves. It's not, I had to tell a young guy the other day, we was at work, you know, and um, he was like, well, the supervisor said, blah, 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 blah. And I said, okay. I said, well, meanwhile, I'm going to go and look because the supervisor was busy and time was moving. Time is money. Time was moving. And um, I said, you know, sometime when the supervisor is busy, we have to help ourselves. Okay. That told me that that not that per that person was a bad person, that he was guarded as a child. That's what it tells me that his parents did everything for him. So all he knew how to do was go to the source and say, hey, you said to do this and this is what I'm doing. It's a good thing. But it can also be a curse. Because if you don't understand the way things are um, put together, while she was doing something, we're standing, time is still moving. We could have been working together to look for what we need to find. And then when she was done, help us out. If it wasn't found, which she did anyway.
But to stand idle, the clock is, is ticking. Okay, and that's what people fail to realize. You can't sit idle. You have to keep moving. The same with business. People say to me, well, Jackie, you be doing so much. And how do you do it? And sometimes you need to rest. And yeah, I do need to rest sometimes. But I can't sit idle for too long. Even when I'm resting, I'm working. Because I work from the bed too. You got to keep going. Success doesn't happen unless you keep going. Now there will be a time where God says sit still. You need to sit still. Then he might say let's go again. But you got to know when. So we're teaching our children backwards. Okay. And it's, it's terrible. Especially when it comes to culture. They have to learn how to be able to take care of themselves. And not always run to somebody for help. Just information, not help. And that's how we want our next generation to be. We're their thinkers. Not that they're overthinking things. You need to overthink. If somebody said to you, or your brain said to you, um... Don't don't overthink this, but I want you to kill yourself. And I'm just using this because a lot of people have been committing suicide within the last 10 years. And then the other side of your mind says, don't overthink it, just do it. Where does that lead you? Don't think about this thing. Don't try to attack it. Don't just, you know, just, just, just do it. This is why I hate the slogan. You know, at first I loved the slogan because I went out. I remember being in the Nike store and I said, oh, I like this. Just do it. You know, Nike means sports to me. Okay. Because I'm an athlete. I, this is what I do. I, you know, I like sports. So, you know, when we in sports, you know, and you're saying to yourself, all right, I'm, I'm going to run this race. You know, can't be scared. Just do it. I'm going to go out on this stage and just do it. Okay? Because they say to me, like, Jackie, how you get out there on the stage and do a, I used to be a host. You know, be a host and then you perform and I just do it. But the slogan in this new generation shouldn't exist. See, everything sometime is only for a time frame. Okay? And I'm going to get with Nike and um, they got to get rid of it. They're going to have to change it to something else. Okay? Because it only applies to certain things. And now these kids today have in their mind everything you just, just do it. Don't overthink. We need thinkers. We need people that's going to think about what turn it out on the table. Okay. Say to they say to themselves, if I do this, this can happen. If I do that, this could happen. It was unheard of. And and, and I'm just going to throw it out there. For black people, okay, or people of my color to commit suicide um, via pain. Very rare. It was a very rare thing. Okay. Anytime somebody got thrown from a roof, we knew, or fell off a roof or whatever, we knew somebody did it. Okay. It was a homicide. Okay, because that's unheard of for our people. 
And for all of these people, a uh, dark people, to be doing, see, we, we, we not, like I said, we're not the ones that want to jump out of planes. We like village. So why would we be jumping out windows and stuff? Mm-mm. It's a reason for it. The way their thinking pattern is. And we need to get back to more culture so we can understand where you need to be. You shouldn't even be up there. And then your mind shouldn't be telling you to just do it. You're supposed to be, oh no, that ain't for me. Because if that happened, that's going to hurt. Ooh, I don't want to hurt. I know I feel like I'm going to die, want to be dead, but I'm going to hurt being dead before I die. You know, you think about it for a moment. Well, let me let me talk to God about this. These people (coughs) are living in major sin. When you kill yourself, that's the biggest sin you can ever commit. Who gives you the right to, to expire God's temple when he wasn't ready for you? Who gives you that right? So why is these people just doing it? Now I've got us people that do it slow because we ain't got no, we don't know no better, you know. We want to drink, we want to smoke, we want to do this, we want to do that. You know, we're doing it slow. But these ones, that's okay. Now, when you come to like OD and stuff like that, that's you know bad drugs or too much drugs, the body just can't take it. Even if you was in the hospital and they gave you too many drugs, it's gonna you're gonna OD. They just don't call it OD. Okay, so same difference. We want a generation of people that's going to think. Not, how did this person do this? It's got to be magic. No, if you would have sat down and thought about it, you would have understood it. It's not magic. You have to think. So this overthinking thing needs to go away. We want our people to think. Take a few moments and use your brain. You know, I was at work one day. My client, she said, uh, I said, oh, I'm so tired. I said, I don't even want to think. She said, what do you mean you don't want to think? It's from the old school. She said, what do you mean? Thinking is good. And I'm like, I know, but I just don't feel like thinking. So I put myself in the the shoes of the children of today. They don't want to think because it's just so much coming at them. They hear too many voices. It's like, shut up, shut up. I hear my my mama over here telling me. I hear my cousin over here telling me. Then I got social media telling me. I got all these things telling me. And it's making me overthink. But it's giving me anxiety. It's giving me pain. It's giving me. So I get why they created the don't overthink. I get it. But it's hurting people. And that's just what I see. We need to get back to culture. Teaching our children from birth. Our culture. What is good for them and what's not good for them. People, living is a job, okay? We have to put work into it. We have to fight. Not physical fight, mental. We have to fight. We want the next generation to be able to take care of themselves. This is why we're pushing reading again. Even though Alexa does everything for us and the worst thing they could have done is made audible. That's the worst thing they could have done. We 
Reason being is because the way a person says something can be the way a person perceives it. And everybody perceives things differently based on how someone says something. But if you physically read something for yourself and comprehend it, then you might understand it. So me personally, like I had a guy tell me, and he's a little bit younger than me. He's not that much younger than me, but he's a little bit younger than me. Tell me, oh, you need to put your book on Audible. No, I refuse to. Because I want people to use their imagination. I don't want them to hear my voice. Me saying, or, or even if I pay somebody else to do it, I don't want them to hear um, voice expression. I want them to use their brain and think about it, imagine it. That's why books are made. So we can go into our own box of imagination based off of what we've read. It's called overthinking. Okay. We cannot take that from the people. Because you get to sit there. You can read a paragraph. You say, whoa. That was deep. You know what? Let me read that again. Because I want to comprehend that a little bit better. The way a person can say something. Can change the meaning. Of something. Just based on how they say it. I always tell people it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And you don't want people to misunderstand what you're saying based on because of the way you said it. Some people have very humble uh, attitudes. Some people have very um, uppity attitudes. Some people have that timid attitude, you know, and they can all read a paragraph. And believe me, someone in the room is going to misinterpret what they say each and every time. So this is why we need to go back to culture. Okay, because that's where it started. The reading. The understanding. Overthinking. Sitting down at the round table and making decisions with others. That's where it all came from. Because they didn't make decisions by themselves. Okay, talk about Thanksgiving. The natives and the white people. When they came to the agreement, one person just didn't make the agreement. It was a bunch of them. Okay? So it's it's something to think about. This is why we need to go back to our culture. And I'm going to say it again. For several reasons, not just One reason. For several reasons. Because our next generation won't be able to survive. Meaning the kids that's born right now. They won't be able to survive. Go to the same children that we're going to be putting into presidency. 40 years, 50 years from now. If they survive. So it's something to think about, people. And y'all need to think hard about it. How we raise our children, the things that we do, the things that our children see. um, What's good for them and what's not good for them. How parents should be doing more research and more reading themselves so they can educate their children. 
not where our children have to see it for face value for it to make sense to them. Okay? And that's where we're at in the world. Everybody has to see everything for face value before they believe anything. Now we're going to talk about superstitions. <laughs> my mama used to always tell me, and my grandma, they used to kill me with it. And I try to tell y'all people, some things we have to let go, some things we need to keep. Okay? We need to make that decision. This is why we need to overthink. Because we need to make that decision on what we need to keep and what we need not to keep. Okay? I'm going to talk about superstition. I talked about superstition the other day, too. My mother used to always say to me, don't sweep my feet. Because I'm not going to get married. Well, damn. She was married twice, and neither one of the marriages worked out. Maybe it was for the best if you didn't get married. Okay? I mean, this is the reality of it. My other grandmother, don't sweep at night. Well, damn. So, there's dirt on the floor, and I'm not allowed to sweep that up. Because it's nighttime. Now, that makes me look like I'm lazy. Not only lazy, dirty, nasty. What's wrong with you? It's nighttime. I'm going to push a broom if I need to. You got companies that's open up all night and you got to clean up. You got to push the broom. It don't stop them from making no money. If you walk up under a ladder, something going to fall on your head. Well, if you lived in the Bronx where I used to live at, something might fall on your head and you ain't got to walk under a ladder. <laughs> okay? So where does the superstition lie? People... <laughs> I have to sit and laugh because people are still with it and teaching their people that superstition still exists. It's a lie. Why would you train your people to live a lie? Until you see for a fact that has happened. Now I'm going to tell you how this story. I had a, two friends. Okay. Matter of fact, I guess it was her birthday. If she's listening. Happy belated birthday. Um, and I had another friend. And, you know, we used to be riding around in the car. And we'd come up on a cemetery and be pointing at the cemetery. And I said, don't point at the cemetery. Ask God to forgive you. You know, ah, uh, that's just a superstition. I said, oh, is it really? I said, I don't, I don't think this is a superstition. It's something about the dead that God doesn't like them to be disrespected or something. I, I just wasn't sure. Okay. But I knew Everybody that I knew that pointed at the cemetery, they lost a family member. Okay? This person kept pointing at the cemetery, pointing at somebody. Oh, Jackie, you, you crazy, you crazy. Like, okay. They, they, their brother died. I mean, that brother, cousin died, got killed. Not even two days later. So now the other one that was coming at me, their mother died. And I looked at both of them and said, I told you. So to this day, 
I hold that, you know, and I, I teach my kids, like even, you know, other people, kids don't point at the cemetery. It's something about where the dead is that brings negative energy. Okay. So don't point at the cemetery. It was this older lady here from the South that was with me. Okay. And we was driving and she, we was pointing, she was pointing and disappointing and disappointing. And I'm like, stop pointing at the cemetery. She's like, girl, I don't believe in that crap. And I was like, okay. She lost four family members back to back. She stopped messing with me. I was fine with that. But I told her. Stop. Okay. I don't know why. To this day. But what I do is I just ask God to forgive me. I crossed out my fingers and I said, God, please forgive me for pointing at the cemetery. Things that we, that have been proven, okay, we know to be true. In other words, make it make sense. And that's what I love about the kids today. You know, some of them, they say, it's the, the middle generation right now. They make it make sense. If it makes sense, then we're going to believe it. Now, mind you, the day that I told that lady that don't point at the cemetery, my daughter was with me. And then I said, oh, you know, Miss So-and-so lost a family member. And then I said it again. I said, Miss So-and-so lost another family member. And um, my daughter just looked at me. And I said, makes sense, right? So every time she we drive past the cemetery, we keep our hands down. But I constantly tell her, you know, I just ask God to forgive me. You know, she don't trust it, though, because she's seen it for face value. She still don't trust. She be there holding her hands down. And I'm like, you don't have to be that tensed up. Just ask God for forgiveness. That's all we have to do when we mess up. Is ask God for forgiveness. They call it repenting. But same thing. Ask God for forgiveness if we mess up. And then try to do better. So we start now saying, God, forgive us for what we have done to our children. America needs to also say, God, forgive us for what we have done to our children. But we start now today and we're going to do it right. We're going to try. That's all God wants to be is acknowledged. And people keep forgetting about him. Because remember, he's the one that cast you the stone, which is death. When he's tired of your nonsense. Now that's in the Bible. We're not supposed to honor anything other than God. That's a podcast for another, that's a, a, a talk for another podcast. But getting back to the culture, all I'm saying is, people, we have to get back to our culture. The way we do things. Now, I was looking at um, Kanye and Floyd Mayweather. They had this party, right? Now, they all just sitting around chatting, you know, and they're like, ooh. Those are billionaires having a party and they ain't doing nothing. It's boring. <laughs> they got music on. But for one, we got the COVID. So they don't want to move around too much. Okay. Two, that's how rich people party. They sit around, chat, talk. Uh, they may implement something. All that jumping around and, and, and um, doing all this drinking, getting drunk, fall down. They don't do all of that because they got to keep their mind thinking at every moment because they're watching. How, how can I make more money?
It's not that they're boring. They just do things differently. And we can't keep judging these people based on how they do things. Just like the people that like to be out in the club with all these unknowns. We can't judge them for what they like. We just can't deal with them. And that's just the way it works. The people that like to have their indoor things, you know, at at first I thought it was just like the suburbs, you know, and my family, you know, but then I was like, when I start seeing other people, I see how they do things. We come together. In other words, we work hard to play hard. Our playing hard may be a little different than other people's playing hard. My play hard may be. And my culture was we come together in our homes. We may get a drink or two. We put on music. We dance. We play cards. We pretty much just unite. That's what we do. Then there's times we go in the field. We want to go outside. But just because we go outside don't mean we we want to constantly mingle with, with these other people. We're just going out to get what we want and come back. That's my, my family's culture. That's what they did. Everybody has their way. And it's all up on, on how you want to train your family to be. And what you adapt to. And what your kids adapt to. Okay, and what they accept and what they don't accept. So don't tell me because I'm a music artist, I got to be in the club every night. I don't. I don't need to be, be there unless somebody paying me. They ain't paying me to be there. I don't need to be there. Because what I could do there, I could do at home. If it's going out to, to meet somebody, I don't want to meet a man in a club. I'd rather meet them in a grocery store, the church, or somewhere, you know, different than the club. I'm just using me for an example. Y'all know I always use myself as an example. We have to get back to training our children. You know, I, I want to bring this up since we talk about clubs. I remember when I was young. And um, I used to go, we used to have parties and stuff at the house or whatever, and it was good. And I upgraded from the house to the club, you know, because I got tired of the, the club party. I mean, the house party, seeing the same faces all the time. And I was like, oh, I'm tired of this. I want to go mingle somewhere else. And it was a guy, his name is B.O. And um, he used to come get me out the clubs. He told them, don't let me in. <laughs> and um, I said, who are you, my father? You know what I mean? Like, my father ain't even telling me to, to stay out the clubs. But it was a reason. Because it wasn't my culture. He's a new Zulu. He was a Zulu nation. You know, it wasn't my culture. He said, this is not for you. Stay out of these clubs. And I'm not going to tell you again, every time you go to the club, I'm going to come and embarrass you and pull you up out the club. So I moved to another state. (laughs) Start going to the clubs there, the bars and stuff. But then I learned as I grew, what he was saying to me was right. This is not your culture. Why are you out here? Only time you're supposed to be out here is if you're with your people. Stop going to the clubs by yourself. So I start going to the clubs with my people. But then every time I went to the club. Not every time I went to the club. But when I started going to the clubs a lot. Something bad would happen. I kept saying why. Because I wasn't supposed to be there. So why would I push myself to going somewhere 
that something bad can possibly happen. Because everybody's intoxicated. Fights break out. All kind of things happen. So when I go to a club or something, I have to go with somebody I trust. Uh, because pretty much they're my caretaker. They're going to be there to make sure that I'm good. And I'm going to make sure that they're good. And if I see something ain't right, we're going to leave together. Two. Or more. I'll explain that a little bit in depth in another podcast as well. Um, But this main podcast right here is talking about culture. The culture, the way we do things. When people go hunting, they go together. We that you hear, hear people say, we are going hunting. We are taking the boat out to go fishing. You may have a man say, I'm going to the bay to fish by himself. But when he takes the boat out, it's going to be we are taking the boat out. It's a partnership, people, to make sure that somebody's able to tell a story. Okay, and that's just tell a story of if something bad happened or good happened. It's a partnership. You can't be alone. That's just what it is. It's a part of our culture. That's the way we designed it. Our peoples designed it. God designed it. You can't change that. Everyone needs someone. That's the way it works. We'll talk about that in another podcast. But I'm going to let this go right now, guys. I just wanted to touch base with y'all on um, some culture. Um, And I'll try to give more as I can. Um, Things that I see. Things that I know should change. And we need to work on it. And it's a long haul road journey that we're going down. However, we have to start today. Because time doesn't stop ticking. And these kids grow by the minute. And they're watching. They're learning the negative. Learning some good and they're learning some bad. We are here to protect them and teach them, get them ready for the world. Just like, I don't know if y'all ever watched, um, I had the, had the beauty of watching the geese outside here have their babies, train their babies, okay, and then... Their babies grow up and go on about their business. It's a short process because, you know, they grow faster than the way our our kids grow because we're human beings. But I watched the process. I've watched a bird build a nest because she's about to have babies. I didn't know, know what she was doing. All I know is I kept seeing her bring stuff to this hole. I'm like, what is she doing? And she was building a house for for her to have her babies. Because she knew that they couldn't be out in the wilderness. And um, she had her babies in that hole. They came, I kept hearing it, chirp, 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 chirp. And they was just up there chirping, chirping, chirping. Then I would see one, when she leave to go get them some food, they would peek peek their head out. And I said, oh, there's babies up there. 
Oh, I see y'all. Okay. So now I, you know, I put some bird seed, but they so little they can't get out. But I put it out there, some sunflower seeds, so she can get it and take it to her babies. You know, so I was helping her. So she knew that, you know, I was safe because I was trying to help her. So it got to the point where, you know, she would walk around freely on my, my balcony. And I'm like, scoot, scoot. You know, it's not that I'm scared of them, but who wants to be around the birds? And it's like, scoot, going about your business. But she's like, well, you, you know, I'm, this is what I'm saying. I'm thinking that she's thinking. Um, well, you helped me, so I'm just, I'm comfortable with you. I'm comfortable here. That's how people are. You help them, they get comfortable. They get comfortable with you. The same way with your children. If you teach them more and they can see that you were right by what they what they 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 um what you taught them, they're gonna get comfortable with you. They're gonna respect you. Sometimes it takes time for certain kids to listen and learn. But if you honest with them and they, they can physically see that you've made it made sense. They will respect you. You have to just stand your ground. Culture wise. This is Jacqueline Richardson. It's JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. I'll talk to y'all soon.